Hey guys, Greg here. Let's talk about this record, Chet Baker. It's coming out for Record Store Day in just a couple of weeks. Chet Baker, Blue Room, another Zev Feldman production. And uh, I'm going to put on the record and actually play it for you and hope I don't get hit with another copyright problem. But we're going to throw this on the Rega P7 with the exact cartridge of clean, yeah. And the Bucard S uh, 400 speakers. This is actually side C, third side, blue gills, blue guiles. Listen to that intro, pure trumpet. So let's talk about Chet Baker, okay? And this is a review copy that I received. Totally surprised to get this in the mail from Zev Feldman a couple weeks ago, very pleased to have it. Chet Baker is one of the most tragic figures in jazz. There's a lot of tragic figures in jazz, right? A lot of them died early, a lot of them had problems, substance abuse, etc. And Chet is one of the most tragic among the tragic. And I was first introduced to Chet uh, in the 80s when that movie came out, Let's Get Lost by Bruce Weber, black and white movie that documented the time right before Chet's death. And Chet was living in Holland, where this record was made. Sp Chet spent the last decade or so of his life in Holland. And a lot of American musicians, a lot of jazz musicians, uh, you may know, found it easier to make a living and easier to get by in Europe because for some reason the Europeans had a better appreciation of some of our great jazz musicians. That's a common theme. A lot of people ended up in different parts of Europe. Dexter Gordon, even Bill Evans, etc. So, this is uh, 1979, the Vara Studio Sessions in Holland, and it's actually two different sessions, okay? The first three sides, side A, B, and C, are recorded April 10th, 1979, and then just the last side is November 9th, 1979. And they are different uh, personnel, if I can figure that out. Anyway, let's keep talking about Chet, shall we? Um, like I said, one of the most tragic figures in jazz. Uh, his life really fell apart, and he had to put it back together. Uh, he was in jail a few times, a number of times. Basically lost everything, had to start over. Uh, got punched in the face, got into some kind of a fight, lost his teeth, some of his front teeth, had to start playing jazz, had to learn to play jazz over again because your teeth and your mouth, the embouchure, very important for trumpet players. Turn the sound just a bit. Very nice playing. But then Chet's career was on the rebound in the 70s especially, and he found uh, popularity playing in Europe, didn't really like touring, but liked playing. So he, he did a lot of club gigs, but also some nice studio sessions. And this, uh, did I mention this record's coming out on Record Store Day? I think I mentioned that. So let me, uh, hold on, let me get the book here. With all Zev Feldman releases for the most part, uh, not only do you get great sounding uh, un- previously unheard or unreleased, undiscovered music. You also get very uh, in-depth production in terms of the packaging, okay? Oh, I showed you the picture. This picture is my favorite part of this whole record, in addition to the music. But this picture, I'll probably show you more than once, really just kills me because it just shows the melancholy in a man who maybe knows he's facing his final years. This was, he actually had like 10 more years to go before he died tragically. Um, 19, let me get my years right here. 1989 is when he died, but this stuff was recorded in 1979. But love this picture, as I mentioned. So anyway, the production on, on any of these discs that you get from Zev Feldman, super in-depth uh, booklets. They're almost not booklets, they're almost complete books because they are, uh, there's a lot of reading to do here, to be honest. And, and 
he always gets a bunch of uh, either musicians or people that he played with or journalists to write pieces for the record. So I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you through it real quick. Not every single every single article, but page one is Zev Feldman's own little introduction to how he came about uh, on these recordings. And then a really nice article, actually, by a guy named Jeroen de Valk, which is a jazz journalist in um, Holland. And that's sort of the main liner note. It's really a good sort of mini biography of Chet and with special emphasis on where he was later in life. So definitely read that if you get a chance to. Uh, there's, there's too much here to go over. I, this video can't go on forever. There's so much stuff in here. Um, Fred Jokumsen, producer and researcher, also talking about the studio and the recording. Then there's a, a song by song analysis by Edwin Rutten. Edwin Rutten, I don't even know who that is. Edwin, I'm sorry for the disrespect there. Um, interviews by people who played with Chet. Phil Markowitz, who looks like he is that guy. The interview with that guy, is he playing drums or piano? I'm sorry. There's too much here to digest for me. Mr. Short Attention Span. Uh, article by Jean-Louis Rassenfossi, if I'm pronouncing that right, bass player. And and then some, some interesting trumpet players. Randy Brecker, Michael Brecker's brother, great studio and jazz player, and uh, Enrico Raba, great uh, trumpet player, on uh, did a lot of stuff on ECM, great photography, and then Let's see, okay. Better, better description of who's playing what. So four musicians playing sides A, B, C, and then the other four musicians playing on side D. In addition to some Chet Baker standards, there's some songs that you don't hear him do too often. There's uh, one, two Miles Davis tunes. Nardis is on this side, we might get to hear Nardis. And um, a Wayne Shorter song, Beautiful Black Eyes by Wayne Shorter. Do I even know that song? I love Wayne Shorter, but I'm not sure if I know that song. Blue Room, sort of the title track here by Rogers and Hart, which I guess is a show tune. Oh, You Crazy Moon, I think that's a Chet Baker standard. My Ideal, oh, Old Devil Moon, etc. So this is gonna be one of the more sought after records for uh, Record Store Day this year. I have a feeling. Um, Zeph Feldman, as you know, always uses Record Store Day as kind of a launching pad for his releases. And there's a Chet Baker, there's an Eric Dolphy re-release, there's a Bill Evans that is supposed to be phenomenal. And there's a series of records coming out that were recorded at the Left Bank in Baltimore. And we'll go into those on another video. And there's a good chance that I will have Zev on this channel talking about some of that stuff in the next couple of weeks. We've just had a hard time getting our schedules together. But I hope you can hear from this that there's some really nice playing. It's a good mixture of Chet playing trumpet, Chet singing, he even does a little scat singing. Chet, I meant to say this at the beginning of the video when I was talking about Chet being a uh, sort of tragic figure. He's also probably the leading figure on of the West Coast movement, the West Coast cool jazz movement, which if you're new to jazz, okay, it's a little different than the East Coast movement. It is it is wider, okay, let's be honest, it is wider. People like Jerry Mulligan, Stan Getz, Dave Brubeck. But it's also a little softer around the edges. It's a little more lyrical and melodic. And Chet, Chet is a master of lyricism and um, never a show-off. He's never trying to be the fastest or most technical or high notes. He's not one of those at all. He's really a very sensitive uh, individual. And, and that's that's uh, maybe a part of one of the problems with Chet, not problems, but jazz musicians, and musicians and artists in general, and I, re I just read an article on this, but, excuse me, bone. Um, the sensitivity that musicians often uh, are able to conjure up and creativity are very closely related psychologically. People who can sense 
and feel deep emotions and then turn around and express it. And those people, unfortunately, are often people who uh, are emotional, emotional outbreaks, anger, uh, drug addiction. All those things are really related. You, you ask the question, why are so many musicians, especially jazz musicians, have drug problems or anger management problems or life management problems? There's a real connection between sensitivity and creativity and expression and, and Chet is one of those musicians that really epitomizes that, in my opinion. Listen to his music, there it is. Lyrical, melancholy. I'm a kind of a depressive person, so I kind of gravitate towards minor based music, melancholy, sad. Uh, anyway, that's my review, more or less, of Chet Baker Blue Room, coming out in a couple weeks on, uh, well, did I tell you the label? Jazz Detective. Can we see that? Jazz Detective is the new imprint by Zev Feldman. This is a limited edition of 5,000 copies. And uh, I think it's gonna be a real hit and hard to get on record store day. And I'm very happy to have a review copy. End of the first song, we'll hear a few seconds of Nardis. Very slow tempo version. arrangement but very nice. Miles Davis, Bill Evans play the heck out of this tune. And I think kind of an unusual song for uh, Chet to play but this is a really nice version. All right guys thanks for watching and there will be more oops camera breaking there will be more record store day jazz reviews and previews for me coming out in the next week or so. We only got three weeks till record store day. Okay guys, thanks again.